This video is only part of an unpaid, unbiased, in-depth review from an average rider's perspective, so check out the rest in the link below at thegoodride.com. If this video helps, please consider subscribing and buying through our links, or even better, become a member on YouTube or Patreon. You'll get exclusive access to video review shorts as we test gear along with a lot of other perks. So thanks for watching, and I hope this review helps. Welcome to the good ride where he geeks and tweaks while I work and twerk over snowboard gear. Today, we're bringing you the LibTech Chris Rasman Pro Model 161 wide. I got this out in a plethora of conditions. First time I rode it was a ice cold, like 15 degrees, single digit wind chill, Northern Washington bricked up, really firm groomer day. And then the next time I got it was an epic springtime slushy condition day in the middle of January on Mount Bachelor. And then I got to take it to Utah and get it out in some waist to nipple deep snow out at Snowbird. So I think you're seeing a theme here. There's been a lot of travel and Davey's going to be talking about that in our Good Ride Travel series coming out later. Yeah, stay tuned people. We got some stuff in the works. I... Didn't get a lot of time on this, but I did go out one spring day with Union Atlas and Burton Kendos just so I could get a take on how this rides compared to all the other Travis Rice boards. But obviously you can see by the size, 161, which is kind of mid-wide bordering wide, and you can see Davey here, wasn't a right fit for me. Yeah, definitely not. It was definitely more my size of the spectrum. I got it out with my Burton Ion boots and my Union Force bindings. So for a short summary, I would say this is a more tapered, a little softer, more playful version of the LibTech T-Rice Pro. And I would say it's just a nice middle ground if you want a little more directional float than the T-Rice Pro, but you want something that rides switch and treats the mountain more like a park than the Golden Orca. And you got this guy right here, also has exceptional edge hold yeah absolutely great for hard snow riding so for sizing this 161 wide was perfect for me i'm a size 12 boot 240 pounds and i'm six foot four and this thing was great i personally enjoy a board that's a little bit on the smaller side but i had full control over this board it didn't feel too big or too small it was just right down the middle perfect size and being a size nine boot 185 to 190 pounds and just a touch shy of 510 this was way too big for me i felt far away from the edges and like i couldn't control it the way i wanted to but it was way better than i thought it would be for this length and width if i size down two sizes smaller it might be doable but it's definitely not for you regular sized footers this is more mid-wide for sure the shape is a slightly tapered directional twin. It has about three or four millimeters of taper, so not very much. It definitely rides similar to that. You want to weight it a little bit more back foot than you would expect. Yeah, I would say like it has that, just that typical Mervin hybrid rocker. It's C2X and that it has a very quick rocker underfoot going to a shorter, camber in the tail and a little bit longer camber in the nose and it doesn't feel as c2x directional as let's say the golden orca or the orca but it does feel more directional than the t-rice pro and it's that same hybrid rocker feel that's a little difficult and auto spinny one footing and flat basing let's say you're one footing off the chair this will want to auto spin on you a little bit especially so in harder snow but as you get into softer snow it starts to stabilize and track a little better and in powder you won't notice the difference between this and a you know hybrid camber board but overall, it can be a little washy if you don't back foot weight a little more and you don't engage that camber profile. But you can drive a little bit off the front foot without it being terribly washy, but it's more back foot weighted to slightly centered. 
So overall, very easy board for beginner intermediates. And it's a very, very easy board to skid a turn with. So if you get off your game, there's a good chance you're not going to catch an edge and just smack into the snow, scorpioned up, broken wrist, <laughs> separated shoulder. When it comes to edge hold, I was thoroughly impressed. This magnet traction is deep. It grips like a beast. I feel it's like almost there with, almost there or there with the gold member, the Orca and the T-Rise Pro. Yeah. So for the flex here, you can see it's a little bit on the stiffer side of medium. Definitely got a good a good spring back. Not not too much, nothing too crazy. The tail is a little bit softer. And the nose is just about as soft as the tail. I found this to be just like a lot of Mervin boards. It breaks a little more in the middle than hybrid camber boards that feel stiffer there with that bow. But what I liked about this is even I could butter it and it popped really well. Mervin has this really interesting pop where I've said this in several reviews. It feels like they accentuate the wood core and liven it up and, and just it feels very poppy and it doesn't have this rubbery feel that a lot of boards have like yes like k2 like never summer and a lot of other boards a lot of other brands that kind of accentuate that rubbery feel this feels like they're trying to accentuate that wood feel a little more and while it isn't as damp in some conditions like hard micro bumpy snow it's still very manageable and it's got excellent pop i i just love the way mervin boards pop in uneven snow i thought this board was great it did a really good job of still having a lot of pop but it stayed damp and it absorbed the chatter pretty well definitely the softer nose if you're fully set back i think got a little a little uh, clown chewy a little clown chewy on you but I didn't really, it wasn't anything noticeable enough to where I would detract it from the board. When it comes to speed, this board definitely can straight line, but the base is not gonna be the fastest base out there. It's got a little bit of kind of texture to it that you really need to wax off of a few layers to smooth out and get it, get it super primed. And I found that it ate wax a good amount and you kind of need to get that that wax sheet refreshed every, every few solid days you ride. Yeah, I've never been super impressed with Libtex bases. I think they get often get a bad rap, but and they don't have the lowest of lows. But if you want that effortless glide, you have to be really on your waxing. Uh, every day almost kind of thing and they're a good bit down from the best of the best that we've been on mm -hmm. uh, and then when bombing yeah it's a little chattery it has a lot of feedback but it it it's doable as long as you stay a little bit on edge you can't like flat base straight line like some people do with this but you know overall i think it's it's fine for what it is for this playful flex yeah exactly and we're like out riding with groups of people, it's not like this board is noticeably slower than anything else. It's just not noticeably fast. Yeah, totally. So for turning and carving, I thought this board was really quick edge to edge. It felt nice and stable at speed. And I didn't have any trouble with the like initiating the edge and staying locked in through a turn. Yeah, even from my limited perspective at size nine boots, I was surprised at how easy this initiated a turn with how far away my boots were from the heel edge <laughs> and the toe edge. Yeah. And yeah, still, it's still not for me, but I can see why Davey likes it. Yep. Yeah, and, and once I got it on edge, I thought the actual carving experience was very dynamic and springy. It felt engaged, locked in, and then I really enjoyed the way the tail bowed and flexed out of the turn and boosted you out in a good speed. This board felt like it wanted just to play all around the mountain and go anywhere you wanted to point it, do any type of turn I thought it wanted to do. Anywhere from some super tight, really deep trenched in carves, circle carves, all the way out to just like these big across the groomer cruisers, 
and this thing was pointing it all over the place and tracked really well into jumps and everything along those lines. Yeah, it feels really balanced. You look at the side cut radius, but you also have to factor in the rocker in the middle and it just kind of makes this board more turny than you would think. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't ideal initiating a turn for my size nine boots, but having all that width made it better for trenching <laughs> than for <sure. laughs> it should have been. Would I still rather be on the banked country or the Libtech Dynamo or something like that? Hell yes. That's a much better carver than this. But this is no slouch for hybrid rocker. And if you lean back into that camber on the tail and really drive that in and get that to spring out, it's, it's a pretty fun, rewarding carve. Yeah, I thought just the overall playful personality of this board really came through when you were turning. And it didn't feel very, like it took very much work to engage that. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll start out powder because I didn't really get to ride it in powder. But I will talk about the setback and then Davey can talk about the powder. So with a 22.6 inch stance width set all the way back, which is pretty good for the size for this kind of rider, you can get negative 2.625 inches back from center of board. And that's pretty good. It's no Orca at like negative 4.125, but it's kind of right there actually a little better than the Golden Orca at 2.25 inches back from center of board. So it's, it's more than many all mountain boards, a little less than a lot of free ride boards. So I like where it is and you can get pretty good setback on board for this kind of shape. But now Davey can talk <laughs> about actually riding powder. So when it comes to powder, this board does really good. It's definitely not a true powder stick by any means, but I think if you're looking to get air and have something that you can take off of a lot of jumps, you're looking to build backcountry booters, drop cliffs, Chris Rasmond's riding style, this is gonna be a really, really good option. I thought it actually landed airs in powder pretty well. It did a really good little back back seat tail wheelie when you uh, when you drop back a little too far on cliff drops or something like that. So overall, for powder, the 161 wide was barely enough board for me at Snowbird. I think if you weigh a little bit less, like you're down 230 under, like 220, the 161 wide is gonna float like a champ. I'm just a little big, so I definitely was pushing it. Once I got into the really steep sections, I didn't notice it at all, but once you get under the blue, a little bit more mellow runs, you definitely notice it a little more. When it comes to switch, this board does really good. For a slightly tapered, slightly directional ride, this thing handles switch really well. I'm personally not the best switch rider, but if you're a fan of Chris Rasmond, you know this board is definitely designed to be able to come into jumps going switch or regular just the same. And I'm massively far behind Rasmund, but uh, I, I like riding switch and I love going out on boards that can do it. And while I liked the terrain wrecker a little better riding switch as kind of like a versatile one board quiver kind of ride in Libtex line, I thought this was very close and very doable. And it's no T-Rice Pro, but it's better riding switch than the Golden Orca mm -hmm. by a good bit. And, yeah, definitely. And it was... I found myself throwing this around a lot when I was riding it and very doable. And this could be fun in the pipe because it's got that edge hold and it's a forgiving ride and it can turn quick. So if you just need to make a quick adjustment before going up a wall or, you know, you kind of screwed up and you need a quick adjustment to not fall, this will do a great job there for riders like ourselves who aren't rippers in the pipe. But if you rip, it could be fun too. And I think this is a pretty good kicker board yeah, from the a, micro jumps I did. But you went a little bigger than me. Great kicker board. The day I was taking it through the park, I was riding with a bunch of friends and didn't have my camera on me. But this board felt really comfortable going off the 30 and forty, like uh, 30 to 40 foot jumps we have up at Bachelor right now. God, I wish you brought your camera. I needed a day off. I needed a day <laughs> hey, off. We all do. <laughs> I don't film every day. I didn't want to have my 360 cam unicorn horn with all of my friends. 
<laughs> unicorn. I, I feel like hey, here comes dildo head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Cone but head. that's what we do for you. But yeah, overall, this board went off and jumps great. I loved it. For the softer flex in the tail, at first I was a little worried because I'm a bigger guy. And when the, I've, I've had just in the past, softer tails don't engage and absorb the impact of my heavy landings as well as I would like. I usually, for a jumping board, I usually need a real stiff dogger. But this one, I actually did great. Yeah, overall, I can see why Davey loved this. It has just like that, like from my perspective, it really has a good mid-wide thing going for it. When I ride a lot of boards that are way too wide for me, like this one, I usually have a shitty time. And with this, I could see what you're seeing in it. And sometimes I can't. So there you have it. Yeah, overall for me, this is one of my favorite boards I rode this year. This is a little bit of a controversial take, but I thought it was a little bit more springy and dynamic than any of the boards I personally rode in the Orca line. And from I rode every LibTech board that would fit me this season, and this was my personal favorite. I think it was just a really good combination of springy, playful, dynamic, poppy without being too aggressive. So you don't always have to be on your game. You can just go out, have fun, but at a moment's notice when you want to turn it on, you, this board will take you farther than your legs can handle. Dude, I don't think that's a controversial take. I think this is exactly if you want to go less directional and want to go less aggressive than the Orca line, you've got this playful dynamic ride. Giving advice on YouTube is very difficult because I need a lot of info from you to actually help. So if you want real advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the link below so I can help you properly.